After Zachariah had insisted that his son was to be named John, his voice was instantly restored. And so the story continues that then Zachariah was filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit and he prophesied saying, praise be to the exalted Lord God of Israel for he has seen us through eyes of grace and he comes as our hero God to set us free. He appears to us as a mighty savior, a trumpet of redemption from the house of David, his servant, just as he promised long ago by the words of his holy prophets. They prophesied he would come one day and save us from every one of our enemies and from the power of those who hate us. Now he has shown us the mercy promised to our ancestors, for he has remembered his holy covenant. He has rescued us from the power of our enemies. This fulfills the sacred oath he made with our father Abraham. Now we can boldly worship God with holy lives, living in purity as priests in his presence every day. Now, one of the things that struck me when I really started to dwell on this passage was this. I was surprised to see that Zachariah, and actually Mary as well, make the link that Jesus' birth is the fulfillment of promises to Abraham. Now, I had associated Jesus' birth as the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies and promises given to others, including those like David, Isaiah, Malachi, but somehow I'd failed to make a firm link between Abraham and Jesus. So it really surprised me that both these two key players in the Jesus story, Mary and Zachariah, make this link explicit. And so I had to ask myself, now what were those promises to Abraham? And I needed reminding. In very brief summary, there was a promise to make Abraham's descendants as numerous as the stars and as numerous as the sand on the seashore. And there was a promise to make him into a great nation that would be so blessed, it would be a blessing to all other nations. And there was a promise to give Abraham's descendants the promised land. And God also promised him that Abraham's people would be his people and he would be their God if only they would follow his ways. So let's remind ourselves, what did Zachariah say about Abraham? He said this, for now he has shown us the mercy promised to our ancestors for he has remembered his holy covenant. He has rescued us from the power of our enemies. This fulfills the sacred oath he made with our father Abraham. Now we can boldly worship God with holy lives, living in purity as priests in his presence every day. Now I don't for a second fully understand all of this. And I, and I realized that I would really like to know more, a lot more. And I also can't help but wonder if Zachariah was focusing more on freedom from the brutal Roman oppression that Israel was under than freedom in spirit-filled worship. But to me, this little passage seems like a remarkably eloquent description of a church set free by Jesus. He has rescued us from the power of our enemies. Now we can boldly worship God with holy lives, living in purity as priests in his presence every day. Believers set free, enabled to worship and enjoy God's presence anytime, anywhere, living in holiness and purity because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And it reminds me of what Peter wrote years later, but you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. And as I said, I still don't fully get it. But it seems to me that God promised Abraham, your people will be my people, my special possession. That's us, isn't it? Followers of Jesus. And didn't God say that he would give Abraham's descendants possession of the land? Is that not what we are doing now? as we take hold of the kingdom of God. 
And didn't God say that he would bless Abraham and his descendants to be a blessing and make them as numerous as the stars? Is that not to be fulfilled in the church? You see, I'd simply never made the link before that Jesus was the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham. And it makes me realize that there is so much more to dig into. There's so much more to understand. There's so much more to learn. And I encourage you, look into it for yourselves. Read these passages in numerous translations. Go on a hunt for greater understanding for yourself. Lean into others who know more than you do and ask the Holy Spirit to be your teacher. I know I don't have full understanding on it at all, but I want more. May God cause his word to become such a vibrant part of us that we would dig deeper and deeper into it and discover for ourselves the mysteries that are hidden within it. That it would become alive to us. Amen.